Oh man, do I have one heck of an awesome mixing palette. I love this thing and apparently so does everybody else because I always get asked, how did I customize my mixing palette? Well, I'm gonna show you. I have a friend that wants theirs customized. So I'm gonna show you how to take this mixing palette and transform it into this in a couple simple steps so that way your mixing palette becomes a whole lot better for your paintings. Let's go. Hey, what is up all you awesome creative people out there? Wild here to make sure your adventures and creativity become bigger and better. If this is your first time here and need help with tips, tricks, how to's, or even tutorials, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. All right, you have to admit, my mixing palette is pretty sweet. I love this thing, but I didn't get this idea all by myself. It actually stems from another YouTube artist called Andrew Tischler, an amazing painting artist. I will make sure to link his channel down below where he likes to mix his paints on tempered glass. And he actually painted the back of the tempered glass to a neutral gray. And the reason he did that is because he explains when you're mixing colors on a neutral gray surface, you actually get a better representation of the colors that you're mixing. So that way, when you apply them to the canvas, you know exactly what you're getting. Reason number two, I like to have my mixing palette already painted on the back to a neutral gray is because when you're working with a solid surface, it is easier to see how thick or thin your paint is on the mixing palette. It gives it a better dimension of how much you need to either tap in on your brush or wipe off with your brush a whole lot better. Does that make sense? It should. I mean, it really, really should. But even if it doesn't, who cares? Your mixing palette's gonna look pretty darn sweet here in a moment. All right, now let's dive into creating this mixing palette. Number one is you obviously need a clear mixing palette. Now this one right here is the Bob Ross mixing palette. I love it because it's got this extra space over the handle here, but just to let you know, this will work with any clear acrylic mixing palette out there, all right? We're also gonna need a few spray paints. Number one being a neutral light gray. The reason you want something that's around 18% light gray is because that best represents skin tones on the human body. As you can see, represented by this grayscale card here. If you can't find an 18% neutral gray, anything that's a light gray will do. No need to nitpick. Number two is you're gonna want a white titanium or close to smooth white paint to spray on the back side of that gray light neutral gray paint. So that way it creates a nice base coat all the way across. And if you wanna go above and beyond, you can also get a clear coat that will go on top of that. So that way you have a nice smooth surface that feels comfortable to your hand when you're gripping it. Also, it will give you easy cleanup if you get any paint on the back of the mixing palette. When it comes to spray painting, please make sure you do this in a well ventilated and clean area. Lay your mixing palette face down so that way the back side is sticking up that we can customize. Before you start painting, make sure you give it a good once over with a clean cloth to get all the dust and lint off it. If it's a used mixing palette, make sure you clean it with some Windex or whatever surface area cleaner you like to use so that way it's good to go. Once your mixing palette is clean and dry, we can go ahead and start applying our base coat of that light gray spray paint. Make sure you stay as far enough away so that way the paint can actually spread across your entire mixing palette and give it a nice even coat. It may require one to two coats. When the gray has become all dry, now you can apply the white paint on top of that. Again, make sure you apply a nice even coat all the way across and it may again take one to two coats. After your white is all dry, depending on the type of paint you acquired and sprayed on, you may wanna apply a clear coat for extra protection or easy cleanup. You don't need to, some spray paints actually have like a nice eggshell or gloss finish that adds extra protection. So it's completely up to you on how you wanna do that. But once your mixing palette is all dry, you should have a beautiful, beautiful, neutral gray mixing palette just like this that is super awesome that you're just going to love. No joke, when you customize your mixing palette, it looks so much better and it stands out and it's just cool and it's gonna help you be a better painter. Now, if you guys like this type of video and you wanna see other cool things that you can do to your art studio or customize or personalize 
your gear, do me a favor and leave me a link down below and I'll show you some cool tricks in some future videos out there. Stuttered over my words, but it's okay. We'll keep going forward. Also, if you wanna help out my channel, you can do me a few things. Leave me a comment down below and also click through the affiliate links down below. It costs you nothing, but it really does help support my channel. Until next time, I'm gonna make sure I put up a couple of videos here on screen that show you exactly what you need to do if you wanna become a better painter. I really recommend you check those videos out right after the end of this one. Until next time, everyone take care and of course, peace.